The first question that we need to address here is, is fundamentally what is a barge? Uh, we're going to be talking about three different categories or styles of barges, individual box barges, uh, river transit barge trains or convoys, and then integrated or articulated tug barge units. Now, each of these is different from the other, and they are different from ship forms and they have their own hydrodynamic characteristics and it's the unique character and nature of the hydrodynamics involved that need to be appreciated for a successful resistance prediction uh, in NAVCAD. Now considerations of barge forms in NAVCAD is that all of the types that we have described vary in some way or another from NAVCAD's ship-oriented format. The NAVCAD arrangement of resistance and propulsion has a single principal hull object, and it's in that hull object that you define the parameters of length, beam, draft, displacement, and local characteristics such as half angle of entrance, bulb geometry, or transom stern immersion. Now, barges don't comply with this kind of geometry. So in order to provide resistance prediction capabilities in NAVCAD, we have put these into a special prediction toolbox. We'll see that here in just a moment. And what we have is that the resistance will be defined as, a, as outside of the regular prediction process as what we call a defined prediction. Now that's for box barges and barge trains. The ITB, ATB tug barge unit is different and what we're going to do is introduce you to a process that we call an equivalent ship system that has proven successful for resistance prediction of those kinds of, of vehicles. Depending on the application, whether it's a box barge or a barge train, for example, the resistance will be identified as either the bare hull resistance as a principal vessel or as a towed component. And it's important to point out that we're talking about features and capabilities that are in NAVCAD 2014 or newer. So as we go to box barges, we find the definition of box barge characteristics in, as we mentioned, a special predictions group, tools, special predictions, box barge. Let me shift over to NAVCAD here so we can show you where this would be. In the main menu, here at the top, you'll see a tools, special predictions, and then these are where uh, these kinds of, of external or unusual hull forms, submarine swath, box barge, and barge train will be defined. So you, we click on the box barge and that will pop up this data entry window here. I'll come back to this in just a moment. Let's go through the pieces of the um, data on the on the box barge form. At the top, you'll see a resistance type. Now, this is where the resistance will be posted either to a bear hull resistance column or the towed resistance column. The reason you might choose uh, from from each of those selections is say you had a um, a construction box barge that was being self-propelled with say a deck mounted thruster unit you would want that to be the principal hull if on the other hand you had a box barge that you were towing at some distance behind the tugboat and you were looking for the cumulative resistance and thrust requirements of that system, you would set up the tow boat or the tug as the principal vessel in NAVCAD and then apply the barge as a towed resistance in addition to that. 
Now, the general barge descriptions that we have here are length, beam, draft, displacement, maximum section area, and wetted surface. And like the data entry options for the hull form, this A, B button here down at the bottom will give you the ability to convert these into non-dimensional parameters. We have two additional groups on a bow form and a stern form. We'll talk about this in detail in just a minute. But we have a length of entrance, a buttock angle to baseline, a length of run, buttock angle to baseline, and a transom immersion. And when we are ready to run a calculation, we can hit our calculate button. Now, the flow of a barge in the context of the box barges that we are talking about here is uh, largely along a buttock. It is very different from the waterline centered flow that we would see on conventional ships. In other words, the flow is not going around the hull, it is going beneath the hull. What this does is it makes the ship-based methods in NAVCAD, um, the 30 or 40 different resistance prediction methods, invalid for barge type characteristics. We need to distinguish two different kinds of box barges, a ship type form, that has a distinct ship-like bow and stern, still very wide, very, be or very beamy, very short, very shallow, but it has more of a ship-like characteristic at the bow and the stern. And then we have a rectangular form uh, made up of typically planar elements, a very rectangular plan form, and we have a raked bow and a raked stern, sometimes the quarters will be um, fared a little bit. Now, in order to account for the shape characteristics and the fairing, we have, are defining a process similar to what we do with half angle of entrance. We want to define a position at the quarter beam buttock, one quarter of the beam off the center line, and at a position of half draft. And we want to take the tangency to our buttock line at that point. That's going to establish our angles. That allows our prediction methods to be consistent from hull to hull. Now, there are two different resistance prediction methods for box barges. Our, our own hydrocomp barge method, that's a proprietary method that we have developed that is based on barge considerations of pressure separation and a little bit of wave making and also frictional drag. The um, drag of these types of barges is different in the, in the wave making form. The large rectangular forward section really develops high pressures. And if you think of a, a true box with no rake traveling through the water, you can, you can really appreciate this. So even though the methodology complies with the ITTC 78 performance prediction method, the parts of the residuary resistance are going to be different with barges than they are from ships. So what we have done is, um, I collected a number of model tests and used some fundamental barge resistance methodologies to identify the individual components and to build them up. Now, this is an ongoing development, and as we get more and more test data, both at model scale and at full scale, we expect this method to evolve and continue over time. Now, this has proven to be the better of the two methods for true rectangular barges. The other method is from a bit of an obscure trade journal uh, from the Netherlands of some work that Holtrup did in uh, the early 90s. Uh, it's a specific barge type method, but it has uh, been shown to be the better choice for ship type barges.
Okay, with that, we're going to move on to um, the barge trains here. We have a question about the box barges. Can we have a mixed hull form application, not whole like a ship and not quite like a rectangle? Well, that's almost what the ship type form looks like. That is, it has um, very low length over beam, very high beam over draft ratios. You want to look at the help file and the characteristics of what each of the methods are, um, the, the scope of, of each of the methods. I think you'll find if it has any significant fairing in the bow that the Holthrop method will probably be the better selection. Okay, let's talk about barge trains. Now, a barge train, also called a flotilla or a convoy, is typically a, um, a vehicle or a system that is run in, in rivers. And of course, this does not correspond to a particular hull type. It is a, a collection or a grid of individual barges, much like the rectangular box barge in many ways, with a push boat. So this is treated as a system calculation, a system prediction of the push boat plus the barges in the train. Now, when the prediction is conducted in NAVCAD, the push boat's contribution is paired off of it and placed in the bear hull resistance column, and the remaining barge resistance is included in the towed resistance column. Now, we can see the the characteristics of the barge length, the individual barge length, individual barge width, a barge count long, five barges in the rectangular grid long, and three barges wide, for example. This is an average system. It does not allow you to do anything other than a rectangular system, uh, like a mixed tow where you might have a center column that's longer and the outboard columns that are fewer in numbers or a mix of, of loading. It assumes kind of an average system. We can define the waterway characteristics, the width of the waterway, the river system, and the depth. We can also look at currents into or with and a current speed. Now the barge loadings, we can enter two different load types. We can enter a full load and a partial load, and the total of the count will be equal to the rectangular equivalent of the number of the count long and the number wide. So here we have a tow of 15 fully loaded barges at nine feet of draft and 1,539 long tons of displacement. And in the bottom, we talk about the prediction options, the prediction method that we'll refer to here in a minute, and the um, barge train arrangement for the how to talk method, which is whether the, the barges are very well integrated or they're a mix of raked barges and unraked barges. There's additional information in the NAVCAD uh, user's guide and help system that will guide you to the selection of, of this option. Now, as I said, the barge trains are based on a rectangular grid with a single push boat, the two barge loadings, and the arrangement uh, further helps to find the smoothness across the bottom of the barge train, shallow water effects, and the, the current speed. Now, there are three different methods here. The earliest barge train resistance prediction method was the Howe method. Uh, that was considered uh, far too conservative by later uh, authors and researchers. Uh, one, um, a gentleman named the Teutant in the early 1980s created a variant of that. His was considered a little um, less conservative. And so the integration coefficients have been modified to suit the, the best contemporary thinking. The Bronzini method is interesting in that it uses individual barge, 
barge load based he they called it a connection factor so the mix of loaded barges and partially loaded barges can be best served with the bronzini method the marshall method is a very contemporary european prediction mod model it does quite a good job with uh, large barge trains or convoys but it should be avoided uh, for convoys with few barges. If you have just one or two barges and a push boat, it does not tend to work very well. The third and final barge type is the integrated tug barge or articulated tug barge. Now, unlike the other two, this is not um, treated as a as a separate resistance prediction outside of the process. It is dealt with as an equivalent ship. So the data that you would enter would be that of the system as a whole. Now, what makes this work is is if we think like the water, some of the things that are proposed here uh, will will be obvious. The, one of the, the characteristics of this is that we need separate project files in NAVCAD, one for the resistance as a system and one for the propulsion just as the um, tugboat itself. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. Now this graphic here gives a brief illustration of, of what an integrated tug barge system looks like. And so when we're entering data, what we want is the length on waterline of the total integrated system. For our beam, draft, maximum section, bulb geometry, and half angle of entrance, we want to use the barge data. And we want to use the cumulative sum of displacement, wetted surface, area of water plane, transom area, that includes, uh, I particularly want to make note of the transom area. We want to add the sum of the transom areas of the barge and the tug. And the stern factor uh, that you uh, might be using if you're using the Holtra method should be set to zero as an average stern factor. The longitudinal center of buoyancy wants to be the weighted average of the system. So you can set up in a, in a spreadsheet and solve for the total displacement and the system weighted average of the longitudinal center of buoyancy of the system itself. So those would be the parameters that you would enter in for the integrated tug barge. I'll come back to this graphic in just a moment, but I want to to stress that this is an engineering solution that we have uh, taken full scale sea trials and evaluated uh, the prediction method, and this has worked pretty well. If if anything, it tends to be slightly conservative. The reason for that is probably because of the summation of wetted surface is really too high. Again, if you think like the water, the wetted surface that exists in the connection between the two bodies will not have any flow across them. And the, um, the prediction methods that you would use for this wants to take into account the influence of longitudinal center of buoyancy and transom immersion, the, the, the area of the immersed transom because what we see is is the edge of the separation that's what we're looking for because the water is going to separate off of an immersed transom at both the barge and the tugboat and so we want to try as best we can to pick up the drag influences of that characteristic so as a resistance prediction it becomes a a very typical process. Once you have your data set for the ITB, you can then go and just run it as if it were any ship. Now, once you get those characteristics, you can then um, 
run a, pro a propulsion analysis after your resistance prediction is uh, completed. However, again, thinking like the water, you do not want to have your prediction of wake fraction, thrust deduction, your whole propulsor interaction coefficients be that of the system. It wants to be that of the tugboat itself because the water flow kind of resets itself at the interface. So what the propeller is going to see is really water that has to do with the characteristics of the tugboat in front of it. With one particular exception here, and it's important to um, understand the effect of flow on the oblique flow corrections into open propellers. If we come back to this graphic here, it's not uncommon to find tugboat drafts that are substantially lower, I, I'm sorry, substantially less than barge drafts. So if you think like the water again, what will happen is that you will get water flow off the barge shoulder underneath the tug and the flow is rising in the stern section. Now it was some early analyses of sea trials where we were getting everything right except for the torque and power prediction. And it, we concluded and uh, through some additional research that there was a substantial rise of water flow in the area of the propellers for many tugboats creating an oblique flow process. Now oblique flow on a propeller cross flow is typically found with shaft angle, but here, even if you have zero shaft angle, the crossing flow creates an effect on the propellers. And the effect is typically that of an increase in torque and less so that of an, of an increase in, in thrust. So it's very important to set up your predictions to include that a correction. Let me switch back to NAVCAD here and show that to you. Come back to this in a moment. It would be, I, this is just a resistance, I don't have this here, but down here in this oblique angle correction on your propulsor data entry, you will turn this on, set your shaft angle to be whatever the shaft angle is for the tug, and then your added rise of run will be a fairly substantial figure. It could be as high as 30 degrees. We have a question. Can the ITB, ATB approach be used for a single barge with multiple tugs? <laughs> I don't know. I've never tried. Um, let me think about that, and if uh, if you can send me an email, perhaps I'll be able to post you a reply. I think it would be difficult because you would need to um, to identify the propulsion side. It may be possible. I would have to think about that. Um, I don't know, but it it. it it would be a challenge. While we're here in NAVCAD, before we wrap up, I want to show you just one particular um, sample of a resistance prediction for our box barge. When you go into your supplemental tool and you open this up and you run a calculate, what it's going to do is it recalculated the figures here, posted this into the R bear column, and then here's our plot. But I wanted to show you particularly here in the parameters table what this looks like. It's a, it's a, the source of the prediction is hydrocomp barge, but it's no longer a prediction type anymore. It's established as a defined prediction. So what that means is that it's just pushed to the r bear column. The coefficients are recalculated properly according to the data that is, is entered. 
and then for your reports that these will have different groups of, of hull data and out, outputs that would be specific to the special prediction that you are, are running. That concludes my slides on the three different barge types. More information on the box barge and the barge train can be found in the help files and user's guide. Uh, use the notes here on the integrated tug barge. It's a fairly simple process for finding the system. Are there any additional questions? While we're waiting for those to come through, in the in the meantime, just uh, a preview of um, some upcoming Hydrocon NAVCAD webinars that we'll we'll be seeing in the next few months. Uh, an introduction to the premium edition of NAVCAD operating modes analysis, prismatic wave drag and hull distributions, and the new scripting and connectivity. Okay, we have a question. Is there any restriction on length over beam ratio for using the box barge prediction? Yeah, the different methods, let me find those for you. The length over beam is actually um, uh, quite broad. It can be as low as two and as high as eight. And, um, but again, Prismatic and block coefficients, of course, are going to be very, very high uh, in excess of 0.8, typically, uh, sometimes a little bit less. And beam over draft can be quite high, as high as, as 11. Um, a question, I do not have the special predictions tool for the barge and barge train. Uh, can this be solved by updating? Yes. Uh, First, the early postings of NAVCAD 2014 did not have this in it yet. Um, if you have a 2014 subscription, uh, you can um, go to the link that was included with your um, uh, security key code update, or you can email us if you need that, that link, the latest postings of NAVCAD 2014 has both the barge train and the uh, and the box barge. And of course, upgrading to NAVCAD 2014, well, it would be 2015 at this point, would, uh, would allow that. Next question, when, when using the towed resistance and or ITB method, are there any limitations regarding weather? Can any weather conditions be used to calculate resistance? The, on the ATB ITB, uh, the general consensus is that uh, the ship type added resistance and seize methods can be added and applied for the ITB ATB system. Um, now, of course, that's just on the resistance side. Their motions gives different kinds of. of propulsion responses. We really don't have any analytical tools for that in NAVCAD yet. Um, but on the resistance side, using the conventional added resistance and seize method would be, um, would be appropriate. On the individual box barges, we, we have some work on the added resistance of barge type hull forms. And what will happen is that the, the hull data form, let me come back here. This form will have another group at the bottom that will have environmental characteristics, much like the barge train has the, the waterway characteristics, will have seas characteristics here, and it will be treated, calculated, and then that will be added into the, um, the, the uh, seas column. Another question, will these slides be available in the library on the website? This recording will be, uh, will be posted. And uh, you can email us or just look for 
come back to the any meeting hydrocomp uh, main page in the next day or two and you'll find the recording um, further question i dealt with a box barge type catamaran before so it seems like because of an extremely high length over beam ratio for a single pontoon this method might not work correctly is there any way to bring the predicted resistance closer to the actual one? That's a, that's a very good question. Um, uh, catamaran type box barges, which really are, catam are boxy demi hulls. We, we have to distinguish what's a barge and what just happens to be a rectangular plan form. I would not say that a catamaran of two rectangular boxy demi hulls would be, um, would find any of these methods successful. You could use the, the conventional ship catamaran resistance in NAVCAD but instead of using a prediction method, you could actually use one of the um, aligned or, let's see if I can get my mouse cursor here, the aligned or the scale from test. Now, just to reiterate, prediction means you're going to use one of NAVCAD's standard prediction methods, Holdrup Series 60, et cetera. Scale from test means you're going to introduce a model test or a C trial and then scale that up using a conventional fruit based expansion techniques. Now this implies that the reference ship and your uh, the ship undergoing analysis are geosims of each other. They're geometrically identical and are just scaled. What you could do is to do an aligned prediction um, with, with um, I'm somewhat skeptical that that, that might be um, a beneficial because aligned prediction is a mix of, of scaling from test and, and a prediction. I think your best bet would be to set the vessel up as a catamaran and do a scale from test. Enter the data that you have into a uh, ship file, and then you can you can use that for this um, scaling expansion. One of the useful ways when you are ready to develop ship files is to use this create new task list, where you can enter a model test entry or a C trial analysis. And what this does is that this creates a set of predefined tasks for you here. With, with hints and additional information that you can then begin to process, check off when you're done. Oops. And this will be a guide to entering data and getting your, your ship file. It's a good question. We're always eager to try and expand the capabilities and the scope of NAVCAD and in as example, with this barge type work, you know some of the the least sophisticated hulls are hydrodynamically the most challenging. And I would say a catamaran of two box geometries would be very challenging. Okay, I don't think we have any more any more questions. So I certainly want to um, I want to thank you. Uh, let me get one last question in in here, uh, and this is a very good one. Uh, spud barges are often towed with the spuds partially down. Can you off, offer guidance on how to account for that appendage? Spud barges, for those of you who are not familiar with the term, uh, they're, they're a barge that has typically 
four long vertical cylinders that are are driven into the ground underneath so they can be lifted up in a stable place for cranes and other kinds of, of platform type work. Uh, it is true that, that these are sometimes run down. Now, what you would want to do is once you get a bear hall prediction, you can then go into the um, appendage side of this and put on a component appendages. And on, at the very bottom of this, we've got a miscellaneous um, appendage type. And so what you can do is you could enter in the number that you have and you would have a drag area and a drag coefficient. Now, there's an extended cylinder option here. This was originally intended for things like small transducers, but it certainly could be used for an extended cylinder on a spud barge. Now, the, the drag area would be the profile area, the diameter times the span of the cylinder that gets extended into the water. And this would be the area of each individual spud as it, uh, spud cylinder as it is uh, run down beneath the water. This also is an opportunity for any unusual appendages um, which can be referenced through um, books like uh, uh, Herner's um, uh, book on on drag. You can um, you can take the uh, the drag coefficient and the area and enter any figure that you want to right here. But this is how I, I would approach that for a um, the the influence of, of, of spuds being um, immersed. And with that, let me let me thank you again for your time here. Um, again, I'm Don McPherson. I'm the technical director here. Uh, feel free to reach out to us on our uh, through our website or directly myself or Adam Kaplan here. Uh, the two of us will be the uh, your principal NAVCAD support contacts. And with that, let me say uh, thank you. Have a great day. And I look forward to uh, spending some time with you in another webinar. Thanks.